Hey, Better Sax players, Jay Metcalf here. Today we're doing another Better Sax Studio episode where I listen to the recordings and videos you've submitted to me of your own playing and give my critical feedback. Today we've got some outstanding sax players to listen to and check out. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has submitted videos. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of guts to put a video of yourself playing the saxophone out there on the internet for the world to see. So thank you very much. I hope everybody gets to benefit a bit from this whole process. If you'd like to submit a video to me to perhaps be used on the YouTube channel, there's a link I put in the description below. Click that link, follow all the instructions to submit your own video. Our first video is from Anthony Mitchells. Anthony says he's been playing for 18 months and he's gonna be playing Orange Sherbert by Sammy Nestico for us. Let's check out Anthony. <laughs> Okay, Anthony, great job. First of all, I love your sound. You've got great control. The intonation is there. Uh, keep working on your sound because that's gonna be one of your strengths going forward as you develop as a saxophone player. Also, your finger technique is great. Your fingers are staying on the keys. There's no extra movement. You're also staying very still, uh, your body, so you're not moving around. All that stuff is great. Keep working on that. Your technique is also going to be a big benefit to you in the future. I can see you playing fast passages with a nice, relaxed, and smooth technique. <laughs> So here's the thing that for me needs the most attention and it's the rhythm. This is very common for all developing saxophone students. Uh, overall, your rhythm is, is quite good actually when you're playing the notes. It's in time, uh, it's relaxed. The problem happens mostly on the rests. As soon as you get to the rests, there's the tendency each time to rush the entrance of the next part. Uh, so just be sure to put the same importance on the rhythm while you're playing as while you're not playing. The rhythm is equally important whether you're making noises or not. Okay, so don't, um, don't treat the spaces like they don't matter as much as when you're playing the notes. Sometimes when you're playing those swing eighth notes, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba, there's a tendency to rush those a little bit as well. So take your time, kind of imagine you're playing everything in slow motion and just be aware that there's a tendency to rush through the rests and to rush the notes that go by a bit faster and just hold it back. Overall, fantastic job though, Anthony. Thank you for submitting your video. This is a great example of doing a lot of things right. Keep up the good work and I hope to see and hear some more of your playing in the future. Okay, next up we've got Gary. Gary is gonna be playing Sunny for us. Okay, Gary, great job. You sound really good. You put a lot of air through the horn. This is good. I like to see that. Let me just get right into a few small things, but easy fixes. When you're playing, I mean, it's great to, to feel the music, but just be careful. I can see your, your leg kind of tapping, uh, you know, a lot of extra movement that's not really necessary. Try to 
eliminate some of that extra movement and just keep your body more relaxed. This is gonna, this is gonna help you with your rhythm and with your sound and just kind of having a more relaxed feel in the groove overall. Okay, Gary, there's some really nice improvised lines you've got in there. Sometimes I feel like you should kind of stop the line a bit earlier. You play something nice, let it finish, and then leave some space rather than continuing with notes that kind of feel like you're searching for something. Uh, we always want to, when we're improvising, we want to get an idea, hear it in our, our ear, ideally, and then try to execute that on the saxophone and let that idea have, you know, a beginning, a middle and an end and then stop. We want to avoid this thing where we're just kind of noodling, okay? Okay, anytime you're gonna play fast passages, improvise things that, where the notes go by really fast, don't sacrifice the rhythm. Don't say, okay, I'm just gonna play fast, but rhythm doesn't matter. Whatever you're playing, it has to be rhythmic. So if you wanna play, if it, this is the tempo, ticka, 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 ticka. You can play 16th note, ticka, 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 ticka. If you wanna go faster than 16th notes, then play, uh, you know, 16th note triplets. Ticka, 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 ticka. But don't arbitrarily just move your fingers quickly without there being some sort of rhythm to it because that doesn't sound great. Keep in mind, you don't need to play a lot of notes. This is very common, you know, as saxophone players, we're always like, ah, we need to play fast stuff because all the great players we listen to are always playing so many notes. But no, you don't have to play fast stuff, especially if it's not gonna really sound good. So fewer notes always sounds better when it's in the pocket and rhythmic and serves the music. Fast passages that aren't played rhythmically and don't really serve the music don't sound good. So leave it out. Yeah, you know, I really like the way you're playing the melody. You've got some good phrasing and, and you're, you're putting your own uh, feel on it. That's great. We want to try to make our improvisation sound as good as when we're playing melodies, okay? So what happens often is a player will play the melody and it'll sound great, you know? And then they'll get into the improv section and they'll try to do lots of stuff that maybe they're not super comfortable with and it sounds less good than when they were playing the melody. So let's uh, shoot for a consistency. If you can play the melody really sweet and really nice and it sounds great, play your improvised solo along the same lines. You don't want to, you don't want the performance to go down when you're improvising. If anything, it should go up, all right? So just a few things to keep in mind. Otherwise, great job, Gary. I like that horn. What is, what is that with the silver neck? I can't really tell what that is. Leave a comment below and let us know what your saxophone is. Okay, our next video is from Jason Frost. He's gonna be playing a cover of A Thousand Years and it's dedicated to his wife. I like that he put in here that he's playing a Selmer Mark Seven Meyer Five uh, Francois Louis Ligature and a Rico Royal two and a half. If you guys submit videos, it's great to put in your description what gear you're playing on. Jason says he started playing 30 years ago, but then took 20 years off. So now he's back to playing saxophone. So let's hear what he's got to play for us. Okay, Jason, great sound. I love the sound. The Meyer mouthpiece sounds good. It sounds like a, a good one that you've got there. It's, you got a nice dark sound. 
is really good for this type of, of song. All right, I really like your tone. You, when you're hitting notes, you're kind of landing straight on them in tune without kind of bending up to them so much, which sounds great. Also, the vibrato is nice too. It's, it's there, but it's subtle. It's, you're not doing too much vibrato. It's not too fast, not too wide. Very uh, tasteful. Also, good finger technique. Your fingers are staying right on the keys. You are physically really relaxed. You're not moving around a lot. All good stuff. Okay. Up until that point, everything's great. When we get to this little improv section, it feels like you're not sure of the notes you want to land on, like your, your target notes. So on this line here, you play like... Yeah. What, what note did you play? It helps to kind of understand a little bit a little bit what's going on with the harmony. At some point, you, you started out with this nice line, but you end up landing on, the, on, your, on your F sharp, which normally would be okay because you're on the five chord, but here the five chord is a sus chord. So it's the F sharp is the third, and everybody else is playing a G. So you've got that clash of the major third against the sus chord, doesn't sound great. You're gonna, you wanna delay that resolution to that, that F sharp. If you were to sing a solo there, you would have never sung that note because your ear, everything about what was happening in the music would tell you that's not the best note choice at that moment. Okay, so it's, all, it's a good idea for everybody. Try to hear what you're about to play first and then play back what you've already heard or sung in your mind. Yeah, overall, great job. Just be careful on the, the little improvised runs that they agree with the harmony of what's going on in the backing track. Maybe work out beforehand the stuff you're gonna play. But overall, great job. Thanks for submitting your video. It was a pleasure to listen to you. Okay, our next video comes from Stefan Stravesky. I hope I'm saying that right. Stefan says, hello there to my favorite uh, YouTube sax channel. Thank you, Stefan. I'm from Sofia, Bulgaria, 31 and very passionate about music and playing the saxophone. And I'm self-taught learning from people like you on the internet. And I started playing the saxophone full-time four years ago. Stefan sounds great. Um, he's playing a uh, uh, jazz standard, My One and Only Love, which I love playing as well. He's got a really nice recording setup and video setup, as you will see. Uh, you can check out his YouTube channel where he's got lots of content. Uh, go check it out and give him some comments and some likes because he's uh, playing some really nice stuff on his saxophone. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Okay, Stefan, great sound, uh, great feel. I can tell you're listening to a lot of music because uh, you know there's a, the stuff you're listening to is coming through in your playing. It's very tasteful. Uh, the vibrato, the dynamics, you're, you're playing softer and louder in all the right spots. Great interpretation of the melody as well.
And on a technical note, you're very relaxed, very still. Your fingers are moving, you know, they're on the keys, not any excess movement. All of that is very well done. Okay, the only thing I would say is, where's the rest of the solo? You know, you gave us like the first two A sections, but where's the rest? Thanks for submitting that for all of us to listen to. In the description below, I put links to all the different videos you've seen today. So if you wanna check out the full versions and leave a comment, give some support to your fellow saxophone players, go ahead and do that. Don't forget, if you want to submit your own video, I'd love to hear from you. Click the link in the description below, follow the instructions, and hopefully we'll see you on the YouTube channel soon enough. As always, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button, get yourself subscribed to the YouTube channel if you aren't already, I post videos like this one every single week. Also, be sure to follow Better Sax on Instagram and Facebook where I'm sharing loads of bonus content on a daily basis. Thank you for watching. See you again very soon in another Better Sax video.